Hi, here I am again with the second of the videos I'm going to do on this sketch. Um, if you haven't seen the previous video, this is a sketch I did a few days ago, which was for a seascape to be painted in watercolour, which I did um, vaguely similarly to that. Um, and I thought while I was painting, while I was doing the sketch, this could just as easily be a landscape if I changed those into trees and mountains. So that's what I'm going to do today. That is the um, seascape that I did. And here is <coughs> another painting board which I am going to straighten the camera which I am going to do the landscape version of now got you more or less <coughs> would have been easier to move the um, board but never mind uh, the board itself is a piece of mill board um, which has already had a painting done underneath on it in acrylics. On top of that I did a very dark wash and then I put this neutral um, raw sienna wash on it all in acrylic. Now look at me little sketch and no expense spared you see that's on the back of an envelope so i'm going to sketch in where i want my trees which is roughly there don't know what that is a bit of paint on my pencil i suppose and we'll put a line there mountains going down in the background trees that was an earthquake or me nutting the camera one of the two a bushy bit there where i've got that rock and then stuff going off into the background um something happening in the sky up there so there we go palette I'm using is slightly different from the one I used before I've got um, I've added lemon yellow titanium white sorry about people outside lemon yellow titanium white Naples yellow I've got ultramarine blue I used cobalt for the seascape sap green yellow ochre light red um that is Payne's gray and there's a gap there <coughs> where i should have put some alizarin crimson but i'll do that if i need it so unless that no that's the oh i know i haven't got i haven't got the raw umber the burnt umber sorry i can't move without burnt umber in an oil painting so I'll put that there and if I need a lizard in I'll just add it to the palette right okay so my usual method of working is to start at the top and work down which usually works out the same as starting at the bottom and working down what did I do with my little there it is in there I have a mixture of poppy oil and alkyd medium poppy oil is my preferred oil for oil painting I like it better than linseed um, and the alkyd mixed in with it helps it to dry a little bit more quickly so there we go mixing 
white ultramarine. I got myself in a terrible mess yesterday because I forgot that I was working with cobalt blue and my mixes were coming out all sorts of different colours and then I realised why. Put some light red into that to make some cloudy colour because even though this is made up it's probably somewhere in North Wales which is where I live and we do much as I hate to admit it get more than our fair share of cloud over the mountains having said that it is still the most beautiful place in the universe that's just titanium white and I'm blending that in to these greys that's why I put the dark on first and then I'm blending lights into it add some Naples yellow towards the bottom to give it a little bit of a glow me Keep on nutting the camera, which is not a good idea. Some more than Naples, just over the skyline. white and touch of ultramarine and up here I'm going to put some blue sky as my mother used to say enough blue in the sky to make a sailor a pair of pants and 
little bit more of a dark colour into there in the middle of the cloud and some more light towards the bottom now I'm going to get my little fan that's a Dalon brush I've had for years and years and years um, Dale Rowney obviously and that's their own nylon blend the Dalon blend they don't know if they still make them even I've had this so long but it stands the rigors of time clean out the brushes because they're clogging a bit oops go we've got a fairly Welsh sky clouds looming up I may do something more to it after but for the moment that will do now I'm going to use A slightly bigger brush that is a Rosemary and Co long flat uh, it's a number six which means it's about half an inch wide so I'm gonna put in the mountains come in here so I'm gonna start off with this dark purpley mix into that I'm putting some burnt umber and some light red A little bit more of the blue and a tad of white which is giving me a fairly warm grey colour which I'll put in I'm painting it into the light paint because I should pick some of that up which will give me a little bit more aerial perspective touch of yellow ochre into that to give it some highlights and over there I'm going to use a pointier brush if I've got one I will use a day long brush that one I must put some hazard tape on this right okay softer brush mixing a lighter version of that colour and 
and that's me nylon brush and There, that's that disappearing into the distance. Yellow ochre. Naples yellow. And touch of ultramarine. And that will give us It's got some distance there by blending it all and keeping it light I can um, make it look as if it's far away add some more light into that and I'm going to use the Naples yellow because it's very it's light but it's not particularly bright if you see what I mean some of the old one into it try to get a gradual blend from distance to the light I want to give the impression that drops off to nowhere so still using this um, soft brush no I'm not actually I'm going to change it to one of my little bristle flats that one uh, because I want to put some shadows in there into my that colour, grey mix, some more burnt umber, some more ultramarine, some more light red, more blue. I just want some dark colours. The sun is going to be coming from that side it's hitting there, glancing off that, so we'll put some shadows I'm just using a very 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 light touch here not drawing as such just trying to lay that on top 
of the other colours. No detail this far away. It's on the other side of a valley. This is probably at least 10 or 15 miles away if it's a real place. Like that. Blendy brush. Now I'm going to put some trees in the blue and I'm just putting a tiny tad of the sap green into it and just stippling. Stippling in a touch of yellow where we get closer. Not much. <coughs> by blending in like this hopefully I'm getting a little bit of an idea of shadows coming in there <coughs> I think I've got my background more or less sorted now Now here, I've got another bit of rock going that way, and I'll, it's getting closer now. Blue into these, those yellowy colours. some of the sap green which is cheating but never mind and into that I've got that's the sap green sap green mixed into that color with some more blue in it now this should bring it forward when I put some lemon yellow into it I want this to be a grassy bit, grassy bit, and I don't want it to blend into there because it's a different plane altogether. Thank you. 
Yalawoka. Where the light is coming through. Now, the colours I'm using here are the same as I've used further into the picture, but they are much stronger. I'm using them, I'm not blending them with white or anything else, I'm just putting them on and mixing them more or less on the canvas. Like that. Blendy brush again. Now, there, I'm going to put some rocky bits, yellow ochre, into that grey. Now, get a little rigger brush. And mix some really, really dark ultramarine blue raw umber burnt umber sorry and some Payne's grey
actually. That is... a bit thick. I'm going to use this brush, which I should have used to start with, which is my Rosemary & Co. Bristle number two rigger and even though it's a big brush the lines it makes are much finer this is possibly my favorite favorite brush to use of all of the hundreds of brushes I've got. See how it's like a pencil point. I know the old adage that a poor workman blames his, tool, his tools but if you've got really good tools it does make your job easier and this brush is a superb tool all the rosemary's brushes are That was a mistake. Oh dear, I've made a mistake. What on earth can I do? That. And the mistake has wented. some light bits going up there I'm nearly finished now all I'm going to do is in this windswept tree bit mix up some yellow ochre into the green that I put there some of the lemon yellow and Don't press too hard here, whatever you do, if you're doing the same thing, because you don't want to pick up the paints underneath. Into that, mix some more of the sap green. Clean the brush first, does help. Sap green. The sap green I'm using, because it was handy, could just as easily have been terra vert or hooker's green all of which I use but I only ever use one made green on a palette so into that I'm putting some ultramarine 
and some burnt sienna. I just want some dark. Bash that brush. dark colour with a bit more blue, a bit more light red. Get a bit of shadow coming in from that tree and that bush. Need some little bits of light some rocks in the foreground there. darks into that just for shadowy bit Just, I'm losing that edge there. Where's my little fan thing? There it is. Clean that up, dry it, but not too. I'm trying to keep it so it's still got a monkeyed edge. I'll get some of the green and I'm just going to give an edge it's not worked There's a technical term for what I've just done now. It's called bollocksing it up. And the technical term for this is unbollocksing. So you can't do this with anything apart from oils. This is why I love them so much. They're so forgiving. More shadowy bits. I need a little doody brush. That one will do. 
and I'm going to put some darker coloured stones which is probably the mistake I made last time having the stones go in with the light first so if I put the dark in first then mix up a light yellow ochre, Naples yellow and just Fiddly bits, some more dark, just into the centre of that tree. Now, where's that little pointy brush gone? On the floor. Right. Just to put some light bits of trunk in there. Right, I'm going to leave that because I'm fiddling. Does it need a couple of buzzards? Maybe something up there.
get, I'm going to stop fapping. So there we are, we'll leave that one, um, another very, very quick little oil, just over three quarters of an hour, and um, all it is, is just showing a reinterpretation of a seascape into a landscape. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon.